All right, we're capturing now. <laughs> we're capturing now. All right, that's a good way to start. <laughs> Fucking, yeah, <laughs> Hitler a in a bunker. Goddamn, people are stupid. Um. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. I'm Joe the Hellhound today. I'm joined by Palm. Hi. Scarlet Tortilla, also known as Austin. Bradley. Hey. And our guest today is Cobalt. What up? Now, start this off. What have you guys all been playing these past few weeks? Mm. Well, oddly, I've been playing through Watch Dogs 2 again. See if I can beat the game on its realistic difficulty. Oh, how's that going? <clears throat> Pretty well so far. I've been trying to do a minimal, ki minimal kills run. And it's definitely been a lot of fun having to sneak around and use my actual hack powers. Because if you get into a gunfight, you're dead. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, been a good game. I would say it's pretty good. A lot better than the first Watch Dogs. If it's on oh, yeah. sale for right now, I would definitely recommend picking it up. Yeah. I, I think it is. Like, 30% off. The time of recording. Sale. Yeah, right now it's uh, $30 on the Steam sale. Okay. Oh, nice. Not bad at all. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Okay. What about what to you, Palm? Uh, I've actually been playing a lot of Secret World Legends, which is the free-to-play action MMORPG remake of the original Secret World. And uh, to follow that up, I've also been getting into Dark Souls 3 as of late. Going for, uh, a, you know, the typical Guts Ultra Great Sword build. Just, I'm gonna fuck everything up. I'm gonna punch it in the face and watch it die. I'm gonna punch it in the face with a massive sword that's like twice my size <laughs> like i'm not even kidding it's guts is sword from berserk <laughs> all right awesome austin what about you halo wars 2 oh yeah they recently released uh, jerome and uh Velvatame, didn't they yo Velvatame. finally tells uh, no, the reaper morme reaper morme the old oh. arbiter from the first game Ooh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the one that had the rage boner Bell ability. The rage boner. Yeah, when you just press Y and go to town on people. The fucking freak of an elite that was in Halo Wars. He's like three times bigger. His model in the game and three times bigger than the normal elites. Wait, so hold on. He... With how his face looked, was he an elite with Down syndrome? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why you become an uh, arbiter. And what it's was not his name? Reasons. What was his name again? Uh, Reaper Morme. He honestly sounds completely different from the first game, which makes sense because they probably don't have this. They probably don't have the same um, voice actor, but even yeah. his elites, like, you know, they, they did something clever, you know. You don't have, um,. You don't have brutes with your infantry, you have elites because he's an elite, makes sense. Da, 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 da. Yeah. But the elites for them specifically sound they don't they don't even sound like elites. They sound like guys with awkward gas masks trying to be mean. <laughs> so it's it's bordering Bane levels. Like the the he is basically Bane. He's like the Halo verse version of Bane. The dual wielding energy storage is crazy. Fucker can jump on a hornet and stab it to death. Jerome's pretty cool because um, you can summon down Omega Team. Spartan that was on Spirit of Fire. Everyone was wondering what happened to them because they didn't appear in the second game's campaign. Yeah. But they appeared in the first one, so they that's they're, they're still around, and they their weapons changed too. They one of the Spartans have an energy sword, the other has a shotgun, not a shotgun but a railgun, and then the other one has a um. A plasma torn turn. off plasma turn. Yeah, that shoots like red bolts for some reason. I don't know why. It could be it a looks... brute version. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. It... I thought that mm. was kind of unique. Mm -hmm. What about you, Cobalt? What have you been playing? I've been uh, going back and playing Breath of the Wild again now that the Master Mode DLC has come out. Master Mode has been kicking my ass. So Literally. it's a difficulty level up, sort of like how they had Legendary and Skyrim like a year later. Yeah, it uh, all enemies now regenerate health, and they're all a level higher than they would be in the base game. Ew. Yeah. Okay. 
and uh, I've been bouncing between that and the Crash Bandicoot trilogy. Oh, that must be fun to play through because I was reading some shit from uh, quote unquote game journalists saying that shit was harder than Dark Souls, but I laughed my ass off. I'm like, that's just an old style platformer. Mm. It's it's the same game, but it it's fun. It's fun. It's it's, crash. it's harder than balls, but it's fun. It's crash. You just can't beat crash. I mean, come on. During uh, E3, they had somebody in the old fucking Crash mascot outfit doing a dance off <laughs> against Sonic. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like seeing all the kids around in E3. That was hilarious because they just didn't know what the fuck that was. <laughs> and I'm sitting here like, yeah, boy, that rivalry's still alive. <laughs> But on the note of kids, uh, VidCon came and went, and with VidCon came a whole bunch of issues with YouTubers, obviously social media, stars, and all that other fun shit that was happening around. And this brings up the major question to start this off. YouTubers and their fan base, do you think the YouTubers should be somewhat responsible for their fan base, or at least have a bit more of a rein on how they act around them because obviously some youtubers some social media stars are what's the word not over exact, the top over the top or not exactly the best person for your kids yeah right all right well i think the biggest thing I is like the problem when it comes in is, like, you're the figurehead behind these people, and they all kind of look up to you for your advice. Mm -hmm. So, if they're doing something bad, you gotta at least make a statement about it and say, hey, we can't do this, this isn't right. Because you can't control everybody, but at least you should make a statement saying, I'm not supporting this, this is all their own independent actions. And mm -hmm. don't promote anything that's gonna actively go against someone else or their livelihood. Yeah. At least own up to it. Yeah. Yeah, I think when it goes to the extent that Logan Paul did at VidCon, where he's like, I had $3,000, and then just didn't tell anyone anything. Mm -hmm. And all of these kids are just running around unsupervised looking for money now. That's that's the point where you're responsible. But yeah. if... If someone is going is leaving their kid at this video convention with a bunch of adults, like they're not good people just because they're famous. That's the parents' fault at that point. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. When it comes to like YouTube and social media and stuff like that, they got there for being smart, not being a fucking good person. Yep. The only person who I think relatively got there for being a good person, actually the two people. <laughs> actually I would say three, but I'm not sure how Pewds is. Um Markiplier and Jacksepticeye. They're very vocal about their fan base, from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. And they're very quick to say, hey guys, here's this, 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 and this. And so on and so forth. Yeah. But somebody like Logan Paul, or say Rice Gum, or Keemstar. Um, meme Star. Meme Star. <laughs> <laughs> they're not. Back on topic. They're not exactly the best people for kids to be around. Yeah. I mean, it's like... What was it? It's like... Put it this way. It's like taking people to meet Filthy Frank without knowing what the hell he does. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or... Or taking somebody to see How to Basic and then they're wondering why How to Basic smashed an egg against their kid's head. Or why there's a naked guy in front of them in the first place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta get that immersion. Got that immersion, get, that immersion. <laughs> that immersion. Vomit <laughs> cake in immersion. 3D. <laughs> oh, <laughs> please no. <laughs> uh, as I went to take a drink. Okay, now we need hands up right now. Who would pay to see vomit cake live? Ah, uh, no. Basically. Well... Let's assume none, because there we cannot see hands. Mm. Not I, said the black man. 
<laughs> but it is a fair, a fair point, and then not to mention with how VidCon was going, there was a f one YouTuber who went around and he was asking ages in a shocking amount of, and it is a shocking amount from the outside perspective because of what VidCon is supposed to be, but it's kind of to be expected about how the age group was there, because from what I can guess it was probably 19 and under. Mm -hmm. For the VidCon audience. Mm. Mm. Yeah, there was a, a couple of videos of like kids just in bars talking to YouTubers. Like mm -hmm. they're in the bar talking to drunk adults. Why? It's like, the fuck is going on here? Yeah, why is that allowed? Yeah. I mean, there was even videos of kids badgering YouTubers and shit like that for FaceTimes for their own shit, too. Mm -hmm. Like, there was people there to create content instead of be there for what VidCon was actually about, which I think was more along... Which is, I think, more along the lines of getting FaceTime with YouTube itself. And then also making connections with other YouTubers and that kind of stuff. Which I find interesting, but then again, we see this growing trend of the parents... It, literally, the kids were there unsupervised. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I would have to say is my biggest complaint. What is your guys' opinion on that? Well, I mean, that's just bad parenting at its core. Exactly. Leaving your kids run around unsu uh, unsupervised and such a large event like that. With people that you don't even know. I mean, just off the bat. And if anything happens, Lord forbid, like, there's, it's your, it's your fault. Because you, you let them go unsupervised. Why? You don't know the YouTuber personally, so you don't know if they're a good person or not. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're going to turn around and steal your kid in the van. Hmm. I got some exposure for your channel, kid. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Please, Whoa. no. You want to be famous? It's like Hollywood back in the day. Uh, uh, actually, no, no. It's still <laughs> it's still Hollywood today. Yeah. We're just a bit more subtle about it. Just yeah. a little. Yeah. Actually, no. No. The, the more, like, out of it you are, the, the more, you know, attention. Mm -hmm. mm. No, but that is a very interesting subject on its own. Which still begs the question if YouTubers should stay in control of their fan base, and obviously it's in the parents' fault if you have your kid who's a 12 and a 9 year old running around unfucking supervised during the event because it is dangerous. It is a big event. Mm hmm. I mean, literally. They're missing all the time. <laughs> they do. And at the same time, these events are dangerous because some of those YouTubers people don't like. I mean, recently, Philip DeFranco had threats against him. And his family because of what happened with Daddy 05. Yeah. And that's an interesting topic because it is, I mean, Philip DeFranco, many big YouTubers have armed security with them. Because of that exact reason. For all you know, you can get that crazy fan that tries to kidnap you or take advantage of your uh, viewers and tie you up in a basement and break your kneecaps. Yeah, and then you just got misery all over again. Do you it's an amazing movie. movie. Yeah, it is. Ama it's an amazing movie. Mm -hmm. I was I thinking think it... more Godfather. Nah. No. No, uh, nah, you're kidnapping the YouTuber. And you tie him up somewhere, breaking their ankles with two by four so they can't run away. <laughs> 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 I'm sitting here thinking of this. Austin, I'm going to capture you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna bust your knees, so you just have to stay in my house and make content. <laughs> You're gonna make me an editing slave. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, maybe. It's gonna be like split, not even like half second clips of saying "free me." <laughs> help, help me. At the end of every single video, just a subtitle say "send help to this dress." Send help. <laughs> It'll be one of those. It's like look at the tags, look at the, the title. Help me. <laughs> Help this. 
Oh, that'd be funny as hell. But speaking of those bat, those kind of people, we recently had that issue with the YouTuber known as um, who was it? Austin Jones. Yes. And I guess the pop artist. Was he a pop artist? Well, I mean, he did covers of popular songs, so I guess you can call him a. a Either way, he's artists. fucking trash now. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't trust that fucker at all. In fact, if I saw him, I'd probably punch him in his teeth. Yeah, because he got charged in federal court for that. Oh yeah, 30 years. And they got proof galore. Oh yeah, and he fucking admitted to all of it. I mean, he had no other choice. You got a video of yourself teaching some 13-year-old girl how to twerk, dude. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not going to state how far it got here in the podcast, but it definitely got to the point of uh, pornographic to a degree. Mm -hmm. And this is of 14-year-old girls, and he was using his... And he was using his popularity to make to pressure these girls into doing these things. That's how it was going, and that is one of the few reasons of why I was kind of having issues with the whole thing with VidCon and people not keeping their kids in rain. Yeah. Because that is a major, major fucking problem. Because YouTubers... Like everybody, you have your good ones, you have your bad ones, and you have the ones that are just like, what the fuck? Dead. I gotta agree with you on that one. There are some really out there YouTubers. Mm -hmm. Both good and bad. I mean, if you think about it, it's not everyone... Not everyone's gonna be like Babyface Markiplier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Sorry. And I mean... You can literally... I'm going to say this right now. I would... If I had a kid, I would not let them anywhere near iDubs. <laughs> That's a good choice. <laughs> That's a very good choice. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like... There are kids who would like be like, Yeah, I want to be around iDubs. I mean, you saw people... You saw like fucking in one of the videos I saw... Like a shitload of kids knew who Pink Guy was. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, how the fuck do you guys know what Pink Guy is? Not okay. No! <laughs> no, it's not! I mean, they'd be like, what, like what, middle school? On a lighter note, I'm going to insert this. It is a, content, uh, a ceramic knife that looks like a chopping kung fu hand. <laughs> like, why are these kids worried about getting content? Hmm. That, that's my question because I think the YouTube thing has it's gone from some because when we were all in high school and so on and so forth it was still relatively a new thing yeah it was still like something that was just emerging because it was something you could sit down and watch and be like okay and then later down the line it's like okay these guys are actually making money this is how it's working and we're and some of us, me especially, I looked at it and it's like I enjoyed making content. I always enjoy making content. I'm like, it's a way to do a hobby that you really love and not hurt yourself by doing it. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. It's like saying I want to be an artist. It's not exactly the best plan in the world, but there is a way to make a living off of it. And half of that comes from the viewers helping you along the way, being able to give you feedback, and it's also respecting that same viewership. Yeah. But there are some YouTubers out there right now that are probably in our same age group or a little older that are complete fucking scumbags. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. But back to that subject of the kids doing it now, it's more of a thing like, oh yeah, I have a channel and that kind of thing because I think it's more along the lines of it's a popular thing to have at this point because you have these people that sit down and they'll they'll beg and they'll farm for subscribers pay for subscribers and that kind of deal and 
To be honest, as a person, and you all could agree in here, especially you, Cobalt, and you, Austin, mm -hmm. that we busted our ass to put content out on our channels. Agreed. I mean, we may not have, like, fucking 10,000 subscribers, 1,000, whatever. Yeah. But, I mean, we sit down literally to an ungodly hour at night sometimes editing content in order to put it out. The type of people who bust their ass be like, oh, man, 100, 100 views, maybe more. I want yeah. that. And, you know, it's the same amount of effort. It's the same amount of... I guess love and care for the work, mm -hmm. regardless of the outcome. Yeah, it's not at this point. We we can give two fucks less about popularity, though it would be nice to be recognized for what we're doing. Oh, yeah, yeah. It would Just be. No one liked it. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm always happy when I see someone hit the like button. It's like, oh, someone wants to rewatch the video. <laughs> 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 Yay! <laughs> <laughs> but it's seeing how it's become a popular thing and especially amongst the younger kids and I mean it's not hard to make a channel it's not hard to put out videos it's the matter yeah. of taking your time caring about it and wanting to put out what you need I mean I eventually want to go to VidCon do whatever meet some of the famous YouTubers whatever the hell mm-hmm probably share a beer with one of them it's just one of those things it's like yeah okay and then just talk it's not about like gaining subscribers it's about learning from them about what they've done and how you can possibly do it and get yeah, better asking, yeah asking what, like, what they did what they would recommend to someone who should starting up and mm -hmm. just getting a general feel of how they feel when they do their job because when More I like the professional feeding, uh, meeting yeah because when I started, I had no fucking idea what I was doing. <clears throat> like, we can all attest to that. We had no idea what the fuck we were doing. Because Pretty we... much winging it then and now. Oh yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> it's like, man, I'm gonna put this edit of the dick in here. Let's hope that YouTube doesn't take it down. Yeah. Just gonna drop penis with a three and equal signs. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, in any situation of any creative aspect, that's always a risk getting into. I don't know, maybe it's just bugging me seeing, like, these kids try to go up there and I just see them begging for views. Because I have the same, like, begging for content. That bugs me. It's like seeing people go, like, sub for sub, like for like, and all that other bullshit. Well, the problem is it's effortless. You're not doing anything to get it, you're just asking instead of working for it. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't guarantee they're going to watch your content either. No. Yeah. You I mean, want someone who's going to be there dedicated to watch it and be there for it, not just boost your numbers. Yeah. Then also you want to make sure that even if you do get a view, you want to make sure you have your retention time. Because, let's say, my XCOM videos may have, like, 24, 25 views, but they have, like, an 80-minute watch time. A pop. Damn. And the watch time is what's really important. Yeah. Like, for instance, a uh, MechWarrior video of mine I recently put up had, like, 50-some views, but it has, like, 100-and-something watch time. That's a six-minute video. That's the aspect that's important. That tells me that people are sticking around to watch the content. Yeah. Even though you have low viewership, you have high watch time. Mm hmm But in regards to how many people have seen it. Meaning I'm doing something right and I'm keeping somebody's interest. Yeah. Exactly. At that point, there's only the only thing you do is just keep going until more and more people show up. Yeah. I mean, Austin, when you put out that damn uh, machine gun shit post of a video... <laughs> Uh, I, it, it, it's basically the biggest laugh in my face. It was fantastic. That dislike ratio, though. Yeah. But you still got people to watch it. That's a good thing. Is it though? Is infamy <laughs> really good though? Hey. Hey, some people can write infamy. You got interaction. 
That's the dumbest That's the point. Thing. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> 16 <laughs> seconds of a mistake. <laughs> I can't help but laugh at that. Uh, Palm, as an outsider to this kind of concept, what is your opinions on this? Or your thoughts? When for honest, you guys lost me. Oh, like a mile back. To <laughs> be <laughs> perfectly honest. <laughs> Pom, what are, what's your moral thoughts when it comes to, like, YouTuber content creation and the values behind that? <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're asking the wrong person for this. Because... What's your favorite video game? Uh, that's actually a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to give you easy, like, quick balls or something. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm really fucking thoughtful when it comes to certain things. And you just hit one of the most thoughtful things on the head. What did you eat yesterday? Uh, what I ate yesterday was actually a chicken mixed vegetable and sour cream with uh, stuffing on top casserole. That sounds really fucking good, actually. It that was really amazing. I'll take that as your symbolic representation of YouTube. Uh, <laughs> as long as it's casserole. delicious, as long as it's delicious <laughs> and somewhat healthy. And covered in Lego like, stop motions. <laughs> there are some delicious <laughs> and healthy foods out there. Hey man, hey man, all I'm saying is that Lego stop motion brought us a Lego movie. And for that, I'm happy. That Speaking of delicious, I have coconut macaroons. Ooh. 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 I'm jelly. You should have brought some to share with the class. I know, right? Hold up, I'm pushing them at my monitor. Try to take them. No, oh no, God, not the monitor. It's killing my tower. You gotta put in. The, you gotta put in the CD drive. So I can open up mine. And you can bring it over here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hold up. Could you imagine if that would actually fucking work? Yeah, someone get to work on that. We need that in our lives. I don't know if you guys can actually hear this. Hold on. <laughs> I heard it open. <laughs> right. Have you sent it yet? Uh, it's about 5% of the way done. It should be done in an hour. Okay. At the I end of the podcast, in the I'll pick it up. Drive, it burns. <laughs> oh, but out, outside of the YouTube stuff, I'm, I'm going to reel this into some uh, technology since we managed to burn through these topics relatively fast. I think oh. the issue is, is we all relatively agree on the same shit. <laughs> yeah, we don't have really <laughs> outstanding well, views. Um, you want some devil's advocate? Strike this shit better. Yeah, I want some devil's advocate, Austin. Give me something so I can kill you over it. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. Great point, man. Let's do it. I just um, want to see you guys in a, in a boxing ring now. I thought oh. I was going to talk about the subjects. Titanfall 2 was a good game. Oh, I just lost half my subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there go mine. I... I... Hmm. Hey, I gained one. <laughs> to be honest, I actually <laughs> kind of enjoyed Tekken Pole 2. It, it was a good game. I just wish the multiplayer hooked me. But that's the issue. I never really liked the Titan Pole 2's uh, gameplay. But grappling hooks. But I mean, Joe, grappling hooks. Attack on Titan. But in the yeah. Future. Here's With my robots. Issue. Um, I'm very weird when it comes to mech games. Of course you are. Mech You're really weird. Sure. Because I have, like... You just I, can't appreciate a good thing. I can't appreciate a good thing. I sat down and played the campaign twice over. <laughs> oh, campaign for the second one was fantastic. Really so what was. was the problem with the multiplayer, then? Um, I'm just curious. It was just, in my head, mech games are either slow, methodical, or we have the Armored Core Gundam style. Where it's mm -hmm. very right. fast-paced. Yeah. Okay, well, fair enough. Did neither, I guess. Because you're more pilot than than mech. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah, I played more like a Call of Duty shooter that went fast, and you could sometimes run around a mech. Yeah. I, I almost feel like that the mechs are actually easy, like more killable in this one. Yeah. The, yeah. the mechs feel a bit squishy. Which so. is weird because it's supposed to be a giant walking tank. I think it's like the ultimates that they did. They did like a weird class, like almost MOBA style thing where like, hey, Ion has a super laser that will instantly roast that you. That was another thing that kind of threw me off. 
That laser is pretty cool, though. Just because I'm was. so used to having mechs that have, like, a customizable loadout. Or I just completely build it from the floor up. A la Armored Core. It, it, it's definitely a class base rather than a, a custom thing. Which, I mean, there are some customizations, like, what different abilities do and stuff. But, mm -hmm. again, that feels more like a, like a MOBA or a, an RTS-style thing. It's like where you're picking... Yeah. Do I want the 2% cooldown, or do I want the 3% more damage on headshots? You know? Yeah, mm. as in compared to what I'm used to, it's like, do I want to risk doing machine guns with these missiles and these lasers? What would be an e -com Actual customization. Yeah. Actual customization and thought process into the actual build or put around to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I can see that. I can respect mm -hmm. Speaking of... There, you finally got an honest answer out of me, besides the fact yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> Which you've been bugging me for the entire time, Austin. You put me on the spot to play devil's advocate. I had to think of something that would push a button. Oh, if you want me to push a button, if Jesus loves me, why hasn't he called? Now you're talking to a bunch of people who are borderline atheist. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> we all, we all, do we want to step into the void of religion? <laughs> No, religion no, not really. Video games. <laughs> I immediately think of uh, Rick and Morty, how Rick created a mini-verse. I'm just gonna... Which is a car battery. Well, here's <laughs> something for uh, you all to react to, since we burned through topics. Google Trend... Oh, Google Corrections. Toon Screen Pie? Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh and... Okay, then. Oh, yeah, <laughs> speaking of Google, thanks for posting up on that, reminded me. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what the EU wants Google to do? What? No. They want Google to pay $2.8 billion. For? Because they are viewing Google as a monopoly on the internet. Yeah, Google mm -hmm. has been showing their shopping links higher than any other shopping places. Mm -hmm. And the EU pretty much was like, fix it. They didn't tell Google how to fix it. They were just, they were pretty much, we're going to pay you to fix it. I mean, you're going to pay us. You're going to fix it. We don't know how you're going to fix it. Get back to us when you do it. Yeah. And they gave them about a month to do so, but Google's looking to refute it. Hmm. But this, here's this something is... funny. I'm on Google's side about this because when people use it, they want what they're looking for within that hmm. first minute. At a reasonable mm. fucking time space. Mm. Yeah. What the EU is saying is it's hurting small businesses. But that brings up the issue. It's usually what I think how YouTube's link things work. It's traffic that goes to it. So say if you search in, uh, I'm going to use a generic porn thing. It's like, okay, we type in, okay, I want boobs. Uh, your first few links that are going to pop up, Pornhub. For about like two, three pages, for Red Tube, X Tube, then uh, Hamster. Yeah, XX Hamster. Yeah. You, you know this on top of your head. Okay. <laughs> I'm just basing this off the popularity of those fucking sites. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> Don't judge. Everyone has needs. Anyways, continue. Moving on. Delete my search history when I die. <laughs> I <got your family. laughs> Think that's Edwin. I give you oh. an image of an alpaca with no with its wall shaved. But you it's how, many... how that works <laughs> is that it's popularity to the thing. It's it bases what people are looking for off of site traffic. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not educated enough to know on how that. But I keep thinking to myself that there's other things that get involved, like. You know, they have a lot of money. They have a lot of power over the internet. They they might be able to somehow prioritize their things over others by not just traffic, but just by some partnerships and deals and shit like that. Yeah. yeah like a, but a does, doesn't Google own eBay? Yeah, which yes. is why it's always the top, which is why they're being looked at by the EU. Because only their stuff show up at the top. Like, you gotta go, like, four or five pages in to find anything True, else. True, but at the same time, it's also judged by viewing history and advertising. So if I type in, like, an item I want to look for, Amazon's gonna pop up first. Yeah. Yeah. 
There's a, obviously there's a lot more to it than anything else. True, but if there's... you're using Google, I think you're looking for what's the best price, not what's like convenient. Unless you're just looking for to buy it, I guess. Because nine times out of ten, for all of us, we use Amazon a whole lot more than we use eBay. Oh, yeah. Well, I think the problem is eBay didn't really innovate with everybody else when it came to buying and selling items. So they kind of fell behind the curve and are trying to play catch-up, and it's almost impossible because of it. Because mm -hmm. there's so, so many people who do what eBay, eBay does now, what, what eBay used to do better now. I mean, hell, Amazon's selling groceries. <laughs> yeah, they just yeah. bought Whole Foods. Did they really just buy Whole Foods? Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Because hmm. if I, let me look this over quick, because I remember that well, Amazon rumored they tried to uh, run do distribution centers more locally mm -hmm. and have groceries you can order and have delivered to your door instead of having to run out to the grocery store. Yeah, they have that with uh, Prime now, too, and Amazon Pantry. Hey, I don't have to deal with a fucking snooty clerk. I'm happy. But I think that goes back to the original comment of like, "Hey, you're monopolizing things." Like, that, that is true. That like, is. Think about think think about that. A physical grocery store now has to compete with a superpower online because they have the power well, and that, the, and the resources. That to... leads to the same mm -hmm. argument about, uh, let's say, Walmart and Target. Yeah, Walmart and Target have been pushing online recently. Well, I'm just saying in general, before they were big online, they were a store that competed with grocery, furniture, electronics, and home goods. So I, I guess this is more of a question of like your, your the freedom to like the, the government versus corporate, I guess. Because it's the, it's the, all of you basically telling the super corporate going, hey, this isn't okay. You yeah. need to stop this. And the super corporate's like, hey, we're a super corporate, fuck you. It's an interesting argument, and obviously it is, there's a lot more to it, which is an, it all itself when it comes to marketing, uh, what counts as a monopoly, what doesn't count as a monopoly, is a very interesting subject. Because here in the States, we have laws when it comes to monopolies. Are they really necessarily obeyed because there's fucking loopholes in that law to all shit? Yes. It's called parent yeah. companies. <laughs> yeah, parent companies are definitely a thing. I work for one. Yeah. They uh, they're they're very. It's very weird. Mm-hmm. Just look at who owns your glasses. You'll be surprised. Oh yeah. I mean, one like, I would say in general, just like one company owns a good chunk. Of 90% of the brands. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Which, that is an awesome picture. Really? Sorry, fucking people, who, audio listener, person. We just pretty much got a picture of somebody's face and a corn That's maze. That's Billy Mays. That's Billy Mays in a corn maze. <laughs> That's <laughs> great. I forgot his name for a second. <laughs> Don't worry, I got you. Buy some OxyClean for five easy payments of twenty ninety nine. dollars 99 blow up your can. But wait, there's more. You can get the Slap Chop. <laughs> he wasn't the one that ever does a Slap I know. Chop, yeah, that was Sam Vincent. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I do know that he did the ShamWow first, though, didn't he? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. Yeah, he did. No, he, he was OxyClean for like the longest time, then he did ShamWow. Yeah, but he, yeah, he did uh, ShamWow though before the fucking what's his face. Uh, talk about Whiplash. Whiplash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Just completely derailed over that one. This is, this is a spiral. It's. Definitely spiral. It's titled Hellcast for a reason, not just because yeah. of the YouTube name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's try bringing this back into the realm of gaming to a degree. Have you ever been so drunk that you flipped the tank? Oh Jesus! I can't say that I have, but I, I feel like there's a story behind flipped it. flipped an elephant in Halo Three. Close enough. <laughs> Man, I missed the elephant. Oh yeah, that was definitely the days. 
sit down, just pile a bunch of fusion coils underneath the elephant. And just flip it. You can get that fucker to get up pretty high. I find this humorous. Hew, hew, hew. <laughs> this is a nice no. stick. Peck, peck. Peck. Oh my god, did you did you guys see the one where they did that with Bastion? Oh yeah, fuck you. Let me smash. Yep. <laughs> my, my smash uh, circuits. Why didn't he get the smash? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, uh... Oh my god. Back to the video game realm of topics. Right. Fucking yeah. XCOM 2. The War of the Chosen shit. That... That is ramping that game up to a new fucking thing. Yeah. Alright, so, I played XCOM, but I have no idea what the new DLC is about. Joe, tell me all about it. Okay, XCOM 2 War of the Chosen is basically, it's an, it's an, it's pretty much revamping the entire campaign. You're having three different rebel factions you're gonna have to deal with, each having their own, like, special hero unit you can get. And with that being said, there's also three specific enemy unit, enemy hero units you're gonna have to deal with, which is like an assassin, a tank, and space wizard? Austin, yeah, is that right? pretty much, pretty much yeah. the last one is a space wizard. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's like Exalt has returned, but they're like, it has three different factions? Exalt, no, the uh, rebel Not factions... Not exactly. The rebel factions will work with you, you gotta work to gain their loyalty, and they will help you deal with the specific chosen. Like, say I work yeah. with one faction, I gotta deal with the, uh, ninja chick. The other faction, I gotta deal with the tank. The other faction, I gotta deal with the space wizard. Hmm. Yeah, you because... You can't play multiple sides, because no, they, they fuck with you if you do. There's a way you can do multiple sides, but it's suggested you focus one at a time. Mm-hmm. The, um... Because I think even in XCOM 2, like, the... The, the points that you grabbed radio wise you you're you were making contact with the rebels hmm. like just the generic rebels so this like ups that on a story scale don't it yeah it does it there's a lot more to it now in fact now they're introducing like another enemy or they're introducing several new advent they're introducing a new enemy type in general which is like i want to say it's like those weird Lambent humans from Gears 3? Yeah. Oh, whether they okay. were many numerous, weak, but and you could yeah. actually hear them scream, kill me. Mm -hmm. Which is. They're ugh. pretty much the aftermath of what happened to the cities during the initial invasion. Like, that's oh. what happened to the corpses. The ones that got yeah. duped? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. And. So. To sum it up, to deal with the increased numbers of enemies, there's a thing, like, you can easily drop these husks, like, I'm just gonna call them husks. You can drop these husks easily and they won't take up your first turn with that soldier. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. And apparently there's a lot more to it. It's like, say, if you light one on fire, you'll panic and you'll run at, like, the other creatures or something in the area and it'll light them on fire, too. And it's just a bunch of them running around. Mm -hmm. So, so th they're not really, like, they're, they're almost not... Are they aligned with the other faction, or are they kind no, of like No, they will force? actively attack them. Okay, so it's kind of like... They are like two the faction. That, yeah, you're like your Zambi, your third party. <laughs> yeah. They're like... Zambis! Zambus. Zambu. Oh, but there is something to know about the Chosen, though. If you do not take care of them, they can show up in the final mission. And you have <laughs> to fight them suck. on top of the fucking uh, elders. <laughs> that would suck. No. That's some, that's some Star Fox shit right there. Sounds where hard as fail, balls. Um, if you have taken on Wolf Squad, they'll just come back even worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Rip. But as it stands right now, um, enemies are also going to get buffed. Okay. So I think they'll be gaining a few more health and armor and that kind of shit. Because obviously you're getting more powerful, they gotta make them more powerful. Game. I don't know how bad they'll be, but they will be bad. 
Mm-hmm. Game's already unfair, to be honest. They're adding a relationship type deal with the soldiers and a compatibility. So your soldiers will work differently depending on how that is. Okay. Oh, great. Workplace conflicts. <laughs> oh, um, <right>. Darkest <laughs> Dungeon kind of a deal. Oh, uh, okay. like a stress meter. Yeah. Oh, Lord. This will be interesting. There's also now combat again. fatigue. Mm hmm. Oh, oh, like outside. So kind of like the original war. XCOM. Yeah. Uh, original XCOM's Long War. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's okay. cool. So they so, they fleshed out some. Okay. Mm -hmm. The advanced uh, warfare center is going to be split into three different facilities. Oh, really? Yeah. It, advanced warfare was kind of like get that, and you're like, wow, it's kind of easy. Yeah, like the initial center will help deal with uh, fixing units. Mm -hmm. Then you have one for the specific training of each key fragment of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But All here's right. something I found interesting about the whole relationship thing. is like, the bonds get better the more time those soldiers fight together. And sometimes you'll just have like two soldiers that just don't like each other. Mm. So but it's more of an RNG practice. It is more of an RNG if they like each other, but the more combat missions they walk away from together, the better that bond becomes. It's like uh, Battle Brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Battle guy Brothers. Did, the guy did something with that too in XCOM 1 when they did the expansion enemy within, and they added mm -hmm. in like the medals and stuff. J just little tiny to the side, like, hey, you can perk up your guys in a different way. You know, because They are you know, also going to be fleshing out the panic system. Uh, how so? Oh, that's gonna be- it's gonna be horrible. But, say if they have- you have two people that really like each other on the same mission, one of them dies, uh, one of the guys will go berserk. Mmm. Nice. Start shooting at the enemy or, I think, whatever is in his way in that area. Kinda mm -hmm. make them feel more like people rather than tokens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. I find interesting. The whole relationship aspect to me is gonna change up the gameplay drastically with the soldiers that and the fatigue yeah it's gonna make the player stories that people write feel a lot more more authentic yeah yeah because i can tell you right now me playing my xcom playthrough right now is like nerd fan fiction <laughs> to me it's like nerd fan fiction yeah don't you have us as a whole bunch of fucking spartans, spartans. yeah <laughs> it's, it's pretty great it's just easier <laughs> having everyone as spartans at this point instead of going through and making sure everyone's like marines you know, I'm actually really curious. Like, have I even shown up yet? You have. Okay. Um, the issue is, is you were very, you got like fucking injured as shit. <laughs> oh. So I gotta wait like a set amount of days till you're back. And that's Damn. definitely the issue when it comes down to it. <laughs> Hold up. Ursa, oh. knock it off. Look. She just Bork. wanted to explain her side of the story. Yeah, yeah she wanted to see. Wow, Podcast. She wants to be on the podcast. podcast Why can't this be dogcast? <laughs> Dogecast. You know, just spitballing. Yeah. We'll get all our doges, put them up at a mic. Dogecast. There we Dogecast. go. Yeah, just have our dogs talk it out. About dog problems. Yeah. <laughs> dog problems. Dog hey, problems no, like... versus people problems. Yeah, uh, and who's more important? Yeah. It's gonna be up. it's gonna be weird seeing how XCOM turns out though with this DLC coming out and how it will change up the gameplay because Long War is gonna get reworked to fit that shit in there. Ooh. Yeah, that's gonna be my next point is how is Long War gonna fit with all this? That's a, that is a fair question because this then brings up the question of well, knowing the Long War studio and how friendly they are with uh, that studio doing the fucking game, they're probably like, yeah, no, we're going to give you an early release of this so you can add it in ahead of time. Probably. Yeah. That's, that's kind of how they were with Long War to begin with, because they literally gave those fuckers like an early release of the game to start literally developing Long War. Not only that, they also gave them access to the uh, basically the root kit of the game. Mm-hmm. Which I do have to say, after I do this playthrough of XCOM, I am definitely going to do a Long War campaign. That would be pretty cool. Mm. You're a braver soul than I am. 
A lot mm. more is fun as shit. It's just time consuming. Yeah, my campaign is fun but grueling. It's like I'm dreading when I run into fucking mutons on that run. That's gonna be shit. Suddenly chrysalids. Suddenly chrysalids. <laughs> That's Suddenly. when I cry. <laughs> Hello, let me lay it to you. I'm gonna kill your soldier. Turn him into a zombie. <laughs> but they don't do that in this one now. Not they like, turn into an egg sack, don't they? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. So I remember I didn't encounter chrysalids, but I killed them before they could get to my soldiers. It's mm -hmm. true. We all have a tendency to kill those fuckers on sight. Yeah, after yeah. the first game, no longer. The first game, we've all experienced that moment where our our soldier came back as a zombie just to kill one of our other soldiers, and it was like, that's and fucked up. Yeah, and then it explodes into another chrysalid. And then everyone panics. And then everyone panics, <laughs> and, and you're just watching helplessly <laughs> as your soldiers are just slaughtered. Yeah, and I'm sitting there like, oh my fucking god, no. My my first XCOM, first time playing it ever, I was doing pretty okay up until the first Crystal, like the first thing where they they showed up. Yeah, I, I made my two my two buddies who were brother and sister. The brother got mauled by a Crystal, turned into a zombie, and then mauled his sister. And I was like, this is. This is fucked up. It's like a Shakespearean romance. This. What the hell? I don't want to play this game anymore. Hey, as long as we don't get a mission where they're all coming out of a fucking whale, I think I'm fine. Yeah. You're Wait, what? Oh, that mission. That The mission where you gotta kill the chrysalid nest. I've never played XCOM. Did you give it a try? I would say that money. Nice. Settle in for a hard, difficult, wild ride. Or I might make, uh, make your friends and watch them die. Yeah, I might. I might talk to watch um, someone level up to the max and then act like a little bitch when it gets. Jesus says "fuck you" and just kills him. It's like I just got my captain. Woohoo! Greased. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it it is. I would suggest the game. It is fun. You can get your soldiers rolling up, and apparently there's gonna be like uh, special full blown cutscenes for War of the Chosen. Yeah. Hmm. Build a Wait. mech warrior ASAP. Build a Sparks. Oh, but that shit's so fucking hard to get though in XCOM 2. Yeah. You have to beat through that crap. I came back with only two soldiers alive when I first did that mission. That the challenge is worth it. Yeah, not when I lose half my men. I'll probably that attempt it again once I get the mag weapons. Does the does that level scale, or does this taste? I don't the think that mission scales. I'm not sure. Cause I I remember in um. If, if anyone can remember the the two little tiny DLC story missions that you got in XCOM 1, and if anyone played them like on a normal difficulty and then played them on a higher difficulty, it's like sectoids. Bump it up one dectoid, what, put it up one difficulty. Chrysalids! And you have no laser weaponry. Have fun. It's like, yeah. what the fuck is this? You gotta be Nonsense. more of a tactician when it comes to that. They just, they pump up the uh, difficulty on those, those rigged missions ridiculously. Yeah. No, but from what I understand, these are missions are pretty locked, so you can get them in the door. Because mm -hmm. they just get even more difficult as, because they, they launch something that's more difficult over time. Uh, like, for instance, with the uh, fucking alien kings and queens, whatever the fuck they are. Mm-hmm. How they showed up in almost every mission until you killed them. Or would show up randomly in a mission and every time you reload they would activate. Never encountered them yet. When you do the DLC missions to get like... To, <laughs> to get the special weapons. The special weapons, you'll get a thing that says, oh hey, it's from Dr. What's her name, Balin? I think so. Valen? So. Oh, it's she's Valen. alive? I don't know. Who knows? Um, 
you go to a facility where she was experimenting on alien embryos. Damn it. You can just I'm see where this was German. going. You Always the her. German scientists. They go way too far. Without the commander to help me. By that, choose my research path. <laughs> <laughs> Great. She just pretty much went down the road of mad scientist, in my opinion. No, yeah, but scientists are great, though. Yeah, but each time you complete, like, kill one of them, you get, like, a special suit of armor you can research and all that fun shit. That's pretty cool. That look like the alien lord or lady you killed. Hmm. 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 Like, you can pull it up, and all the armors look pretty cool. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. You get a special weapon, you get special armor. I've been trying to... I beat it once on normal. I've been trying to beat it on the higher difficulty. Can't seem to get past certain points. So I, that's probably why I haven't seen that stuff yet. Because I bought the DLC after I beat the game. Vanilla. I don't know what I was rather upset about when I was... Uh, oh, when I went through Dark Souls earlier. Hmm. Hmm. I, I learned that uh, Henry of Asora changes gender depending on what you are to be the opposite really uh-huh so if you're playing a male you, she's fem it's a female and if you're female it's a male and i was like but i wanted my like super excited girl that i can marry and make into <laughs> my queen of hollows it's like oh <laughs> now you get the prince of hollows fuck that shit i'm going vanilla I will <laughs> link the fire. <laughs> <laughs> it's like lesbian for life, but no. Not happening. No Google squishels for you. No, no. Nope. Mm. I was I was legitimately bummed about that one. <laughs> Yo, no one ever raised shit about that. I'm pretty sure someone would have. Like, if the game was released today and someone found that, guaranteed someone would have lost their shit about it. I'm sure if you dig it hard enough in some form, you'll find it. I view Dark Souls as sexist. Also, I can't passively go through any of the missions. No, it's all about <laughs> fighting. God! <laughs> it's like this stupid so fucking hard. joke post I saw about Wolfenstein. I went through this game and it forced me to kill everyone. There was no pacifist run available. No, you're meant to what? go through gunning down Nazis. This is an Undertale. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second, oh, these are Nazis. This is Undertale? Wait a minute. This isn't Sans. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to the new Wolfenstein. I'm having a bad time. Oh my god, dude, it looks amazing. It does. Liesel! Liesel! <laughs> Fucking dude. fries the car! <laughs> bad okay, I'm looking forward to dropping acid and killing Nazis. <laughs> oh yeah, that uh, is a thing, isn't it? You could drop mm -hmm. acid and kill Nazis. Wait, what? <laughs> Did you not watch the trailer to the end? The guy mm -hmm. drops acid and like, starts messing around with a cartoon lizard. <laughs> yeah, and he's but... killing Nazis. <laughs> <That's> amazing. <laughs> Holy shit. Fucking Wolfenstein is great. They added uh, Blazkowicz to uh, Quake Champions. That they oh, did. Yeah, I heard about that. He's fun. His yeah, special ability his, uh... is the fucking dual wield. Oh. I will say this double rocket launchers is broke. <laughs> <laughs> it's broken. Did that game ever come out? Oh yeah, it's been out. It's in open beta right now, and then they're planning to just release it to like full blown whatever. Because it's gonna be uh, free to play. You can buy like the full version. They'll give you all the gladiators. Mhm. Mm or you could just like play the free to play version, which you can just get like the trial run of the gladiators or whatever. Mhm. Mm Actually, no, you can save up and get them mm -hmm. permanently. So. I'm planning when it comes to full release, I'm just gonna buy the full fucking thing. Cause that's a game you adore. I love Quake, even though I suck dick at it. Yeah, uh, aren't they gonna, if you buy the uh, full version, you get all the current heroes and all future ones as well? Yeah. Like, put it this way, that entire community is waiting for a trailer for Doomguy. 
Oh, yeah. everyone oh, loves you, Doom Guy. Mm. <laughs> I'm trying to think, what would Doom Guy's special ability be? That's a rip and tear. Rip and tear. Rip and or like gets a chainsaw. Oh. No, just, BFG ooh. shot. Yes. Like, oh, BFG shot. Yeah. BFG shot just obliterate everything in the room. I'm gonna be down just for like a one-shot BFG cannon. <laughs> But we'll see what happens, because they've been changing up the lore to a lot of the characters. But I'm okay with because it's it's Quake, and the writers do a good job. And it fits yeah. in with how the games follow. Well. <laughs> I just want to see some more strong enemies. I want Doom Guy, and I want... I just want just, like, classic Quake brutality. <laughs> rip and tear, rip and tear. And there has been a rumor sparked that they are currently working on another Doom title, but I'm not sure if that's the Doom VR. Uh, yeah, they showed the I Doom VR. I think it's VR. the Doom VR. Yeah. I can only imagine how that would go. Actually, uh, from what I've seen, because I actually stayed up late and watched the Bethesda conference while it was going on, it looks like it's based on teleportation. To move, you teleport to a spot. Yeah, and then you were shoot. like a human that got fucking annihilated by a uh, pinky, and apparently your torso is like hooked up to a machine, and your brain's still working, so you're controlling everything that way. And the same line of that is being made by uh, well, Bethesda's publishing it. They're also working on a Fallout 4 VR. That this one you don't teleport around; you actually have to walk around in. Mm -hmm. I want to see how to handle the walking. That is something I want to see, too. Yeah. As cool as I think VR is, I'm going to say this right now, that shit shouldn't be a main show event. Well, it wasn't a part of the main show. It's just more like saying, like, oh, this is a thing that we're doing. Yeah. But, I mean, when I sit down and I look at Bethesda's conference, I'm sitting here, I want to know what they're doing new. Like, I want to see new titles and stuff like that. This is your time to advertise. Do it wisely. Yeah, because you can buy Skyrim older. again. Yeah, you can buy Skyrim again. I own Skyrim for Xbox One, 360, PC. Yeah, but you can get Toaster. it in VR. Yeah, or now you can get it in VR and the Switch. I know, right? I'm never going to touch that thing with the Switch. No, but here's the thing. You can also now get... Blank. Mud Crowd Armor. Yeah. yeah. I actually that did some digging into it. that. I actually did some digging into that. And it works just how, just pretty much like how TF2 curates their hats. Yeah. And fucking, what's it, what you call it, curates the uh, weapon skins. Uh, CSGO? Yeah. It, it's the same fucking thing. I don't know, I'll, uh, I'll hold my judgment the, on the creation place, the, the creation club. Yeah. I'll, we'll have to see how it turns out, but that's pretty much how it works. Modding is a different different ecosystem. If they're going to try and copy TF2 to do it, it that's not a good formula to do, well, especially when some mods can be here's much, something much Here's something that's interesting once they stop looking at it as mods, more along the lines of third-party DLC. Because it's actually being curated, it's actually going through the process of bug test, and it's not just being like thrown out there without a give a damn. Most it mods aren't game. just thrown out there, though. Some That's, are, like, that is true. care, though. That is true, but, I mean, we've seen those pretty pr piss-poor mods to begin with. I mean, hell, look at the Steam Workshop. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> that, approving it and then making people pay for it isn't a better idea. But it's a way for the modders to actually get some money, and you may have the argument is, like, there's the donations. But in reality, the yeah. only modders that get the fucking donation money... Are the fucking sex mods? Like, Not literally, really. Train Wiz talks about his donations, and he gets barely nothing. And you have something like Lovers. What? What's the main mod for Lovers Lab? Oh, I used to know it off the top of my head. I don't oh, anymore. Bradley, I'm scared for you. <laughs> nah, it's just. I just that know a lot about the mods. That scene. makes all the house mods. She gets a fair amount of donations. Mm -hmm. But that's not the same with, like, all those, like, heavily made modders. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes them want to... Like, some of them makes them want to work, is the donation process. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I would think that if someone's not gonna donate to them, they're not gonna pay for the mod. Mm -hmm. But we'll have to see how relatively that turns out, because I... I'm looking forward to seeing how this will work. Because obviously this is gonna stay. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, that's a god given. And if it works out the way how I'm thinking it will, which is pretty much like curated shit like TF2 hats, and things like that, or weapon skins, but on a bigger scale, I'm going to be like, okay, cool. Am I really going to take part of it? Not really. But it'll be a good thing to see something come along those lines as like a way to do DLC different where the fans can create it in comparison to a mod. Yeah. So I believe there's like a rules guide where they said they're not going to let current mods that exist be loaded up there. Mm -hmm. And it has to be actually like properly developed and tested and officiated by Bethesda staff. And so we won't so, see, say, like, that asshole who did Wet and Cold, like, take down his mod on Nexus and then put it up on Steam for money? Yeah. <laughs> We're not gonna fucking see that. God, that guy was a cockbite. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stick to Nexus and donating to people I believe in. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and when oh, I make really? mods, I'll post them on the Nexus, so... Mm -hmm. I don't know, I think it's I'm waiting for it to come out and if Bethesda does go for the Nexus, it would be a very very foolish move. It would be on their half. In fact, Steam got that backlash when they did their paid mods deal. They got a major backlash when they did that. But yeah. I would have to say, opening up with the Mud Crab armor joke was really really bad. Yeah, that was <laughs> not a good way to do it. No, like, that was not. <laughs> We get it like, ha ha ha, it's funny, but that's still fresh in our minds. That That's a fucking meme that's not very big in the community. Yeah. Because the mud crab armors thing was a joke by Bethesda because of the horse armors. And then they put it out and not too many people were pleased by that, so... Just uh, the cricket. Like cricket what? could be heard. Cricket. But we'll have to see how that turns out. But I think it's time to relatively wrap this up. Sounds so, good. We've been going for about an hour. Yep. So thank you everyone right. for joining in. Those for those who have actually stuck around this long. Thank you. You're uh, the real thank MVP. You, thank you guys for showing up. Thank you Tech for showing up. Bravo. And till next time, we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye bye. See ya. See ya.